I remember when we came in, we had a, we had two major international hotels in St. Lucia. Major international. San Antoine and the villa. Now, in, in, in San Antoine, I had about uh, Mrs. French, you remember her? She was, she was more active in Red Cross than in, in little, about six rooms. Then the big, next big hotel was the villa. Uh, and the villa was classic. The, there's one guest who stayed there told me, this is the only hotel where you have salmon for breakfast, salmon for lunch, and salmon for dinner, because the, the manager of the hotel was Miss Salmon. And she was like the, she, she was the, like the custodian of, of a school for wayward girls. You know? I remember going there uh, with a friend, uh, he had come in from uh, in one of the boats, and I had to take him to dinner. So I went there, and I didn't have a jacket and tie. And she told me she couldn't serve me dinner there because I was not properly acquired, uh, attired. But if I sit just over there, she can give me something to eat. <laughs> <laughs> so that was. Uh, then we. In the, I think it's 1960, uh, when the Americans handed over, the raid we was on was a part of an American base, handed it over. Uh, and it's, perhaps the, the beach was, uh, as, as, is as beautiful now as it was then, but that time it was a beautiful beach. I mean, we used to, uh, Castries was, you know, the city, and it was, it was country. So when you had to go in a big, big picnic and <laughs> and <laughs> big uh, excursion or whatever it is, you went up to Radley Beach. Well, we, we the, the land that was handed back to us, what do, could we do with it? We got the British government to the, the Commonwealth Development Corporation to build the Sanusha Beach. They built, they were, they were then trying to help us to, to develop, get into tourism, not on us. They, they built the Grenada Beach, the St. Lucia Beach, and one in Antigua, and one in Belize. It was a, a chain of hotels built by the, the CDC. Uh, now, we had had an agreement, we leased it to uh, a Jamaican entrepreneur, he was a big big name in the hotel in Jamaica, uh, Issa. And as one of the conditions that he had the lease of that property was that he should expand to, I think, on the whole beach, 600 rooms. Try as we could. We could not get any takers, because when people came into the St. Lucia Beach, you know, a lot of them had to leave by ambulance from mosquito bites. You know, it was, you had to be fogging the area, you know. The fogger had to go around and round in the evening to fog the place with mosquitoes. The people in Grosile, now, the big industry, in Grosely for children after school. You came from school, you change your, your, from your school clothes, and you go in the pasture to pick up, pick up cow down, to, you pick up cow down to burn in your yard to chase the mosquitoes and the sand flies. And now you, as you sit here, if in those days you look Grosely, you see a whole haze of smoke. It is the burning of the cow down to keep away the mosquitoes. So we could not get this place. We could not get a tourist development in this area. Difficult. We tried, tried as, as we may, we could not get rid of the sand flies. So we called in uh, the company from Jamaica, the Matanos, 
who had experience in this thing. And they said, well, you can't fill the swamp because it was, it would take, you cut down the pitons and dump it there, you can't fill it. I mean, so, 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 so deep. So what you have to do is to fill it, fill it with water, with sea water. So dig, dig out the lagoon. But when he went down and taking off the muck, below that was sand and coral. So you had to dig it out. Where do you put it? Do you throw it away? Because it was hundreds of thousands of tons of sand in the bottom over this, I think the, 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 the swamp itself, the, the, the muck, was probably four or five feet. But below that, because it was apparently the old, on, on the, the old geology that was, it was part of the seabed. So we found coral and sand. What do you do? Where do you put it? So we look at it. Let's join the uh, Pigeon Island to the mainland. Because some old lady told us in the old days when she was come from church, she used to actually walk on low tide, walk from Grocery to Pigeon Island and during the low tide. So we decided for two reasons. One, we had to put the, the coral and the sand somewhere. And two, we had to create land to pay for the dredging. So we decided to create, I think, about 70 acres of land that joined Pigeon Island to the mainland. And once that was done, the sand flies disappeared. And the, but it's remained there. This area remained as it was from 1974, nearly 10 years, until the marina came. And when the marina came, the place blew. So now, having got rid, rid, rid of, of the sand flies, you have tourist development here. But you have another problem. You have a problem of transportation, air transportation. When we s tried to get into the um, tourist development, we got the Canadians to help us to expand the, what is now Curanora, then Beanfield, to expand the airport to accommodate the jets. Okay, the Canadians came, they helped us. We built that airport to accommodate the jets. But Huonora is the one end of the island. Castries, the administrative capital, is at the other end of the island. And your tourism area is even further up. So what do you do? How do you get it? So we improve the East Coast Road, improve the connection before to go to Via Fort. I mean, like if you, it was two days, one day to go, yes, you leave in the morning, one day to go, and one day to come back, come back in the morning, come back next, next day. So two days you had to, so how do you get the junction? So we connect it the East Coast Road. We built the East Coast Road. I would, you know, I must sometimes look, I have to look back a bit. I remember when we were doing the East Coast Road. The same problem I had in building the Castries Grows the Road, the resistance. Some little old lady's house was there and uh, don't move, just like in the Conway, don't move. When we were doing it, I realized that uh, you to push a highway through these villages you're going to get into trouble you're going to kill people so I told the consultant look we have to bypass every one of these major settlements 
So we back put the Denry bypass to bypass Denry. You imagine the containers going through Denry village? We bypass Miko. We bypass Veerfoot. We bypass Lagri. Every one of these villages were bypassed with the highway. I remember, <laughs> you know, if you look back, you must <laughs> laugh at the nonsense. I remember hearing myself say that I don't want these, the tourists to pass through these villages because they're so poor. You know, I, want, I don't want the tourists to see the, these Denry and, and Miko and so because I'm ashamed, you know, but you did it. GIS, serving you better. G.I.S.